In a previous video, we were talking about uh, typical pump systems and uh, what, uh, what most people don't uh, think about uh, when, they're, when they're looking at pump systems is, you know, what is the variation in pressure throughout the system? People, what people are usually interested in is just figuring out, uh, you know, at a certain flow rate, what kind of pump do I need? Like if I want to, I want to pump uh, 100 gallons a minute of something of water, uh, uh, 10 feet high. Uh, you know, how much, uh, how big a pump do I need? And they leave it at that. But you can, uh, you can see that uh, the pressure in this system is going to vary all the way through. For example, at this point here, we have uh, zero pressure, or we have atmospheric pressure. And as we go down into the tank, pressure rises. So the pressure at the pump suction is going to be equal to whatever pressure is at that level in the tank. You're going to have a pressure boost by the pump. And then the uh, pressure is going to go, is going to drop as, you, as it goes up. Even though we're getting lots of flow through the pipe, pressure is actually going to drop. And it's going to actually go below atmospheric pressure because at this point here, as it comes down, it's going to come to atmospheric pressure at this point. So pressure is varying throughout the system. Most people don't realize that and don't need to take this into account or, uh, or even understand that. But uh, there's an interesting um, uh, situation where you really have to uh, understand that uh, pressure is varying like that. And that's the case of a siphon. What is a siphon? Well, siphon is when you take a liquid from a high point and let it drop by gravity to a lower point. So if this is a tank, and I have a pipe here, and I go all the way down to some level, right, and have fluid flow here. Well, first of all, this is not a siphon, because this is not uh, what, uh, the definition of a siphon is this, it doesn't include this. <laughs> This is not a siphon. And the reason it's not a siphon is that uh, the tube is not going upwards. So what constitutes a siphon is the fact that you need the tube, say this is this level, you need the tube going up before it goes down. So something like this to a lower level. This is a siphon. And so it's rather, it kind of gives us the uh, impression that we're getting something for nothing because the liquid is starting at this level is going up on its own before it drops flat down, which is, you know, rather magical. Uh, how, how is it possible? Well, it's possible, the, 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 in a nutshell, the reason why it's possible is because at this level here we have uh, low pressure, that is pressure that's lower than atmospheric pressure. I don't want to say negative pressure because there's no such thing really as negative pressure. We have atmospheric pressure on the on the tank surface here also, but it's possible to get pressure that's even lower than that. So the the, uh, the amazing thing about a siphon is that as the, the liquid travels up through into the tube and downwards, the pressure drops at here at this point lower uh, than atmospheric pressure. Of course, you need to start the siphon first. If this, if this tube is empty to start off, it, you won't get flow on its own. So you need to prime it. So you need to apply initial suction to the tube to get it full of uh, the liquid or water, for example. And once that's done, this tube will empty this tank on its own. And it's done exactly like I, like I just mentioned because this, this, uh, these part, these fluid particles here are at lower pressure than these. So this is actually driving. This is higher pressure than here. So this pressure is driving the particles upwards, and after they pass this point, they're just falling by gravity down to that point. So the initial energy to get it started has to be has to be given by filling the tube up. But after that, gravity and pressure at this point here in the in the air, in the atmosphere, does the rest of the work. And that's what a siphon is. 
this is not a siphon. This is strictly a gravity line. But this is the cool thing, a siphon. Now, if you were to make a siphon, you can easily do this in your, uh, in your, um, you know, in your garage, whatever. And, uh, and I had this experiment when I was doing uh, these classes on the road. You could, uh, if, you, uh, if you have a little valve here, uh, let's say a T, and a valve here, if you open this valve here, you'll see that air is being sucked in. And in no time, of course, the siphon stops because this part of the tube becomes empty. And that's, this will prove to you that this, this area of the tube here is under low pressure. And without low pressure, you don't have a siphon. And uh, that's what a siphon is. So you can find out all types of information like this uh, on my website called uh, pumpfundamentals.com where uh, you have stuff for beginners, intermediate, and, uh, and uh, more advanced people. The site used to be called uh, lifemypump.com. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, at the time, I thought it was a good idea. And uh, uh, it sounded good. It would have some, some sort of... Uh, spiritual connotations and this and that, uh, you know, uh, I just I thought it was great and uh, only one of my friends uh, who, who started basically laughing, you know, pointed out that, uh, well, his laugh told everything that maybe the, the name wasn't, uh, wasn't appropriate for the, for the subject um, and I, he, that point, he brought that point across pretty good, so uh, I changed it <laughs> to pumpfundamentals.com. There you go. I'll see you on the next uh, video. The Heineken Uncertainty Principle says you can never be sure how many beers you had last night. <laughs>